Solar Phantom. I've been waiting to get into these videos. Um, I've, I've got my latest version up here. At the one I'm running is version 6. Uh, we'll have a discussion. We, I'll put up a video later about how you can download it. What I ended up doing was I downloaded the OVA, threw it onto my uh, ESXi server, and brought it up. And then I've done updates. Just go down the updates and do it that way. But you can also, if you have a CentOS or RHEL, it only runs on those two operating systems. So just be aware of that. It's not, uh, Phantom does not give you nearly the options for a OS base that you have with other Splunk instances. But if you've got RHEL or you've got CentOS, go ahead and put that. Uh, you can download the files on the Phantom page. They'll tell you how to do it. I, or you can just download the OVA and that'll give you a sent OS instance. So anyway, basic uh, guideline navigation here, we're going to get our search ability up working in Splunk. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come here, we're going to go down to apps. Apps are the, uh, the once again, a very crucial part of Splunk here. You can go to Splunk base and get them. If you download the OVA, a lot, we've got approximately 209 apps come with the OVA. Uh, otherwise, you need to go to e download each one of these individually from Splunk Base. And if you don't have it, you can just hit the install app. You'll drag a little tar file over and you'll have the app. You, but again, you just go search for them in Splunk Base. In my case, they're already installed, so I just have to search for them. And they got a nice little search bar up here. I'm, I look here and I do not have the Splunk app that I want. I do have Splunk apps. I got who is SSH. Uh, HTTP DNS, but that's not the one I want. I come over here and I type in Splunk. Bring back the Splunk apps. Here's a CSV import, a parser, signal effects. This is the one I want, but how do you know? You click this little expand the actions that it can do. And we're going to be, we got test connectivity, get host events on poll and run query. This is the thing we actually want to be able to work is to allow Splunk to be able to allow Phantom Soar to be able to query <coughs> your Splunk devices. This is a hugely uh, valuable piece. So I can grab which version I want. I'm going to go use the latest one, 2.13 here. And I'm going to click this configure new asset. And basically, when you make an uh, app, you create an asset. And the asset is really just kind of an independent little uh, app that you can then drop into playbooks, but it'll be, it will contain all of the configurations that you set. And so there may be a time where you have many, many uh, assets that you need to configure, or maybe you don't. For example, if you have a distributed search and you have many different indexers across the environment, you might need to build an asset for every one of those indexers you want to be able to query. If you just have a central indexer and that's all you're going to query, you're going to have one asset. And so the, the assets allow you to, uh, a little bit of freedom as to how you want to use them. In my case, I'm just going to point it right to my indexer. I'm going to call it main Splunk indexer. You can name it whatever you want. You can give it a nice description if you want. Uh, you can put these in there. Don't. Doesn't matter. Go to asset settings. This is where all the magic works. I need to put my IP address in. So I'll put in IP address to my Splunk instance and port 889, yep, that's right. Username, you might create your own account for uh, your Splunk instance if you wanna be able to track it, because you, you can log and see what it's doing. Uh, for this sake, I'm just going to keep it as my admin password. Probably not the best practice here. You probably wanna create your own account. Call it, go into Splunk, create a phantom account, and then give it username and password. You could use an API token, I'm not. Uh, don't need an owner. You do need to set the time zone. I'm just going to set it, make it really easy. I'm going to put GMT here. I would pick your time zone you want to run it out of. And then we will come down here. And the next thing is there are tags, values to appear. We're good there. We don't need anything else. This over here is if you want to have Splunk just on at random intervals, query your Splunk instance. Uh, cool feature, not going to outside the scope of this video right now. Nope, we're not going to update the password there. And we're going to choose the label. As we do more tutorials, these uh, labels will come become more, uh, you'll become more aware of it. But a label is kind of a way of uh, dealing with these events that come into Splunk. 
sorry, into Phantom. And you might have IDS things that you're going to work on. You might have system administration stuff. You might have IT service intelligence. You could have different events coming into Phantom, and the label is a way of saying, "Hey, you're going to go. Down, we're going to we're going to logically group you together like this, and then you set your playbooks to run on specific labels." And so. This case, if we're searching, if we're searching Splunk and getting any data back, what do we want to call it? I'm going to leave it with a generic event, but you must specify the event. Uh, you must specify the label. Otherwise, you'll get an error when you hit the save. And I've already clicked it, so you can't see that error, but it'll tell you, hey, you need to set an event. No problem. I'm going to hit save. So you have to set the asset info, give it a name, asset settings, IP, uh, ports, username and password, ingest settings, set that. And now I come back to asset settings and down at the bottom, once I've saved, this test connectivity becomes available. If I click it, it'll tell me started successfully. That's good. It queried test connected successfully. Basically, that's telling me it made a little query out to Splunk. Splunk accepted it. I'm good to go. That's all you need to do. That'll end this tutorial. We'll have a lot more on Phantom at SOAR. Please join the playlist. Watch all the videos below as they come out and we cover Phantom in more detail. Anyway, I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja and hope to see you back.